Hey everyone, uh, hipster username, also Kent, CEO of Invoke. Today, we're going to talk about the much anticipated release of Stable Diffusion 3, medium by stability. The new model has everyone talking for better or worse. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about what's causing controversy and some of the analysis that we've done on the team uh, around the license to make sure that you understand what it means for you as a professional. So let's dig in. So first up, let's talk about what Stable Diffusion 3 is. It's the latest model architecture from Stability. Uh, it was largely hyped as the successor to the SDXL model, which this, like that model, generates images from text prompts. And it's available on Hugging Face for download, as well as on Stability's API for direct experimentation. Uh, it's been noted as having a significantly improved prompt adherence. And what that means is when you prompt for something like compositionally, this underneath a bench or uh, something on the left and something on the right, it much better understands what you're going for. So that means it's, it's really good at understanding and sticking to what you ask for it to generate and arranging those elements in a more coherent way. Uh, however, what we've noticed with a lot of the community getting their hands on the model is that unlike Stability's API, uh, it's not performing as well from a quality perspective. Uh, it has significant issues with anatomy, uh, users have, have been flooding Reddit uh, with a lot of examples of disfigured creations. Uh, there's an article from Ars Technica that came out with some of the more eyebrow raising examples. I think the, the overall take is that this medium model is just not really as powerful as it was hyped up to be. Beyond the image quality that's coming out of the model, though, the real story to focus on is the licensing of Stable Diffusion 3. Stable Diffusion 3 was released under a non-commercial research community license agreement. What that means is the freely downloadable version can only be used for non-commercial purposes unless you go to the Stability website and purchase a creator license. Now, the creator license has some restrictions. It's not built for enterprises and it has a number of uh, qualification restrictions. If effectively, you need to have less than a million dollars in revenue or institutional funding. You need to have less than a million monthly active users. So that's kind of like the startup-y uh, type of focus there. But the real interesting piece with Stable Diffusion 3's creator license, which again is intended and sold to individual professionals, is that in the FAQ, it lists as having a restriction of generating only 6,000 images per month, uh, which is a pretty low number for anyone who's actively used these models locally. If you exceed any of these limits, you're gonna need an enterprise license, but there's been a lot of confusion uh, a lot of questions and a lot of complaints about actually getting one or getting answers to questions about what's inside of the enterprise license. We've had some of these questions ourselves. We still don't have many answers. So all we really have to go off of is the fine print in the creator license. And that's where I think there are some serious caveats here that professionals need to be aware of, especially if these end up uh, inside of the enterprise license as well. So what I want to do now is review the creator license. So we can actually talk about some of the points in the creator license that give me some pause and that we're actively advising customers to really strongly consider uh, in evaluating whether they want to move to something like Stable Diffusion 3. The first thing we'll talk about are just some basic definitions that are at the top of the license agreement. There are three that I really want to focus on, core model, derivative work, and outputs. The core model definition means anything that Stability is providing from a model perspective, as well as associated software. Outputs are anything that you generate using those models. In this case, any media, images, video, audio, text, all of that that comes out of the software products or the core model, those are gonna be outputs. Derivative works mean any derivative work of the software product, but it also means any modifications to a core model, uh, including fine tuning. Now, beyond just fine tuning, it also highlights any other model created, which is based on or derived from the core model or its outputs. The key piece here is that a derivative work is created anytime you train any model, even if it's not SD3, on outputs from SD3. 
Now, this becomes a little bit of a concern for organizations who are thinking about intellectual property. The reason being, if you think about your intellectual property portfolio pre-AI, a lot of that is going to be human generated. Post AI, we've got three categories of work, human, human plus AI, and AI generated outputs. With the way that this license is written, any AI generated output or human and AI generated output, because it'll have components of the SD3 model in it, any of those outputs are going to now have this asterisk on them, which is if you train them into a machine learning model, you must consider it a derivative work. Now, this is gonna be important because when we look at other pieces of the contract, this definition of derivative work is gonna be central. So the first thing that I think is important to call out is that the creator license is not uh, like the old school software licenses where you bought a license key and you had perpetual access to the software as part of that license. This is structured as a recurring fee structure. So what that means is you are buying a license so long as you continue to pay the license fees on a recurring basis. The second piece that I'll note though, is that upon termination or expiration of the agreement or the license, all of the derivative works that you have created must be destroyed. Okay, so inside of the fine print specifically, it says your customers must immediately cease using the software products and any derivative works. So what that means is if you stop paying these membership fees or the, this license fee, you actually have to delete any derivative works that have been created. That means any downstream fine tunes, uh, which would include any LORAs, but it also means any model that you have trained using any of your outputs from SD3. Now, what that means is that your IP portfolio as a professional is now going to have an element, if you use SD3, it's going to have an element of this kind of ongoing obligation to pay stability a recurring license fee if you ever want to use that in any downstream machine learning training. Now, as professionals starting to adopt AI tools, I think one of the observations that we've seen is that this synthetic data set that you're creating using the underlying models, that in and of itself is a powerful tool for training future models. You're gonna to want to be able to leverage your IP, including the things that you create with Stable Diffusion in future technologies, because Stable Diffusion 3 is certainly not the last model. However, the way that this license is structured, if you do that at any point, you have to continue paying stability a fee. And I think ultimately what that means is you are getting into a relationship here with your intellectual property where you don't really own and have full flexibility over those outputs. And I think we all respect what stability has done for the ecosystem by creating openly licensed models like Stable Diffusion uh, 1.5 and SDXL. And I think there's a, a fundamental need for stability to find a viable revenue stream. However, the issues that I have with this license are that for open source, this really doesn't move us forward. It's a restrictive license and it doesn't solve the underlying value proposition of what open source AI is intended to solve for professionals, which is you own your data, you own your uh, intellectual property and the fine tuned models that you might create from this, which are derivative works as, uh, they are listed inside of the license. That is part of the intellectual property that you want to be developing with the underlying models. As open source advocates, uh, we release our software Apache two, uh, which, which means zero restrictions. You can use it for whatever you want, including commercial purposes. Uh, we think that that is the right way to do open source. We don't think that the SD3 license really meets the bar for what we would require from an openly licensed model to say that it is going to move the needle for organizations. This is putting aside any questions around image quality. It's really just a focus on the underlying license itself. So our recommendations for professionals right now are primarily reviewing the licensing terms and understanding whether you intend to develop intellectual property with these models. Uh, if you're primarily going to be doing maybe some one-off projects where you won't hit that 6,000 image limit, 
uh, and you don't really care about training future models on your intellectual property, maybe there, there might be some benefit of that creator license. Right now, it's very difficult to, to speak to the enterprise license because we've not been able to get a response from stability and we don't really have any uh, visibility into the contract terms. I do think it's probably worthwhile to call out that with the enterprise license, you might be able to negotiate for a larger fee, the ability to own those outputs and train them into future models. I, I'm sure that the licensing is pretty flexible when you're talking about large sums of money. Uh, but as of right now, we're just working off of the creator license and the type of restrictions that we're seeing here, which I think for the large majority of the community is what matters. Um, if you're a hobbyist or a researcher, the non-commercial license is not going to be a prohibiting factor for you. You're probably going to be able to do the type of uh, playing around, tinkering with, and usage of the tool that you would otherwise want. Um, but I think really for businesses and professionals investing in artificial intelligence and kind of building out their toolkit, SD3 is going to be a really tough uh, model to use. I also think that some of the image quality problems that have come with the base model are assumed to be solved by the community. And we've seen that with SD1 uh, and SDXL, the community takes the model, fine tunes it and kind of brings the capability set of the overall ecosystem forward. I think we've already started to see some model authors get concerned by these licenses. And I think the 6,000 image limit for the creator's license is extremely low, uh, especially if you're using these tools uh, in ways that are iterative in nature. Each one of those images and steps in the process is technically unimaged. And so you hit that threshold really quickly. Generally speaking, I think from Invoke's perspective, we would like to see an openly licensed model. Uh, we think that that's what enterprises really should be focusing on. And the large majority of the enterprises that we've spoken to in the past 24 to 48 hours about uh, Stability's decision with SD3 have indicated that they're thinking of staying with SDXL for the time being and continuing to fine tune and train that until such time as a future openly licensed model is made available. We'd love to know, what are your thoughts on SD3 and its licensing terms? Have you gotten good results from it? Uh, have you found a lot of the issues with the uh, model like the community has? Uh, feel free to drop your comments below. Like, subscribe if you want to stay in tune with what's happening in uh, professional AI. We've got some conversations with experts that are planned for the coming weeks. So stay tuned and happy invoking until then.